really stressed themselves. They've had to go through quick births and then change. It was drummed out of us in every part of life, the quickness of how the world goes and they, they destroy and, and interrupt the teachings. And by the way, when you learn this, go home and the first person you teach is your daughters in and let the sons hear and know that you're teaching your daughters this. That will expand faster when your daughters start coming up, even as small as they are. Let them play with the dolls so they understand this and let's give them little pieces at a time. But, um, but what I'm trying to do now is come to observe and see how much, because my first birth was very terrible. I had a mother who was, and father that went through a cultural shock, so they were very frustrated. And um, I know that when you bring children through and they uh, have the birth trauma, um, even while they're going, uh, being carried in the mom's tummy, they build upon all the emotions and such. And it, not only that, you have three generations back where those trauma come through and are, are recognized in the, in the, down to the cells, way down deep in. So um, that on top of having to come into a world that's very different after all these years we've had um, been able to be calm, even though we had broken into tribes, we had inter relationships where we respected each other's territory. So there was peace, even though we had lots of wars among each other. That's natural. Human beings, even neighbor to neighbor in your own tribe. But right now, we, uh, we like to, I uh, like to bring back that because they've already started. What you're doing here in this class, they're doing theirs, bringing it back by the old people, the holy people. And we're going to combine the two because that's very important, especially now. When things go down, you're going to find yourself very active in having to use what you have, improvising and remembering and having that. You have to have that uh, memory, uh, um, how she tells it, to, so that you can go into action and not have trauma because there'll be trauma all around you. And you'll be rushing some of your patients in and out, even maybe bullish fight, fight, uh, fine, flying. But the reason why we're opening up the spiritual side of it is because you'll have protection. And that's where you need to be. Get yourself to the point where you can uh, kind of operate, or, I mean, you know, go through your, your um, scenarios and such. Learn how to envision that so that it's already complete and you don't have to worry about it. It's be second nature to go right into that. But our people had that because they've had to uh, do it on the run even where a um, pregnant lady would be on horses if they need to to get her out. And she's bouncing around trying to have that baby and such. And, but uh, they learn how, they know how to tell the man folks to go ahead and they will take care of the baby and then they know how to catch up with the tribes uh, when they're on the run. But I'm, we're trying to bring that back and I'm trying to connect the two, so that's why I'm here. Uh, second of all, that has come really strong is that we have to really have peace about letting um, the mother or the child pass over. Because if you can get past that, knowing that it never stops life itself because we have eternity. And there's uh, some of those little children come and be able to get their bodies and such and have the experience. But you send them forth with love, even the mother. And uh, if you see that, and if you're close to the spirit, you'll know how to uh, lay that out as it goes and just keep the mother smooth because they'll always be connected. And you can have that. And you can do it through prayer and your own um, way to bring the healing through their faith and, uh, and your faith too. But um, I've lost a couple of children. The, the main one I had was a little boy whose whole name was given to me and just before um, he was um, just now six months in my tummy. I uh, interacted with my father's, my husband's father, adopted father, and he was a Texan um, person, uh, LDS, but very in trauma himself because he wanted to die, he was old, he wanted to go back home, and I was the only one taking care of him, and I being Native American, him saying he loves Native Americans, 
It did a show when I was having to take care of him and myself at the same time, and I lost the baby, and I blamed him, and I blamed myself, and I blamed my husband for not taking care of the situation with his dad. It was very traumatic because the first birth I had was bad enough as it was, 36 hours in pure labor. And so I understand all the pains and such of having to birth children. And now I was having to lose a child under that situation and I had to make sure I did, I wanted so bad not to leave that imprinted on that baby, but it was very hard if it wasn't for my bishop, not my husband came, because my bishop doesn't even, and my poor husband didn't even know he wasn't attached to that baby at all. I carried that baby while he was out having to take care of following the prophets around and recording him because he's a, in, he did film. So I had to go through this by myself. The first birth, I would have never made it with that 36 hours in labor if it wasn't for this beautiful white lady. Uh, I say white because she's dressed in white. I know now that she was from the other side of the veil. And she came and says, that's all right, sweetheart. And she talked me through. She says, now just relax. We'll get it out. But my poor little baby, when they brought him to me after about another day or two days of recovery, I did not. I, I don't know where I was, but he came with a black eye and just bruises because they use, uh, forced it out. Um, but I try to take as much as I can to um, go back and try to love him. To this day, he, he's really separated from me because we didn't have that um, time with each other. But he's still okay. But on the, when I lost the baby by myself in the hospital, I really, it really hit so hard that I had a hard time losing that baby. And um, my bishop had to s sit there and help me try as best he can to give me the words. And because I, I was so upset that I didn't let the angels intervene and tell me it's going to be all right. The baby itself came and says, it's all right, Mama. And I heard him. You know, there's, uh, there is an uh, answer for what all of what happened. And uh, every once in a while, I hear that little child, and I will, I know that I will be with them and know how that will all. So I'm okay. It's just tender in my heart. I guess that's why I laughed and laughed at this little fellow, because there's no way I could, I could put my whole mouth, his head in my mouth <laughs> to breathe. But... You know, uh, I can't relate to it at all, but that's good practi practice. I, another time I wanted to tell you and uh, is that I held my sister's little baby in my hand and talked to her when she was dying because this is terrible, but I knew that baby could live. But I know the doctors looked at my, do my sister and she had nothing. We had nothing, we're so poor. And there was no way he's going to put us in the situation where they have a lot of money using all their equipment and such to let this baby live. I knew that baby could live. And yet I was standing there and he's saying, okay, go ahead and say goodbye to this baby. I'll leave you alone. Cause, and he went out. I knowing that they could have, I mean, they can take care of babies when they're premature. I talked to that baby and loved it. And, and I wanted to also breathe in him, also breathe in him, but the Spirit told me just, you know, I'll take her. And so I, lost, I, I saw that little one die. So this is the song I thought, well, I'm a singer and that's how I can express myself. I'm not very good at articulating in a language that I, only language I know on earth is English. I don't speak my new language, but my my songs and my whole being expresses itself. But this is a song.